elephants, they kill more people in Africa than any other mammal. But Jessica is different. Rescued and raised by humans, she hangs out with the puppies and lets herself into the house. To strangers who don't know her, she would appear as a dangerous rogue animal. Uh, the future for an animal like Jessica, it's something I'd rather not even think about because it's something going to one day make that animal become aggressive. But it's not clear whether Jessica is wild or tame. You can take her out of the bush, but you can never take the bush out of her. In March 2000, not far from South Africa's Kruger National Park, the rivers were in flood. Living on the banks of one of them is retired game ranger Tony Joubert. One morning, as he was delegating jobs to his farm workers, one of them spotted some movement in the grass. And there I noticed this little baby hippo lying there with an umbilical cord. Within hours of being born, Jessica the hippo had been swept away from her mother by the floodwaters. This is a spot where we pick up Jessica. The water was up to here. And she was lying right next to the water on her side. And as we approached her, she turned onto her tummy and tried to get up. But she was so weak, she fell down again. Being so weak and so young, I thought Jessica's uh, chance of surviving was very, very slim. Jessica could not have washed up on a better bit of the riverbank. Knowing that Jessica would not survive without his help, Tony decided to take her into his home. Today, Tony lives in peaceful retirement on his game farm, not far from Kruger National Park. With potentially dangerous wild animals passing through his land, Tony carries a rifle for self-protection. Three years after rescuing Jessica, Tony met and fell in love with Shirley. I'm a qualified international beauty therapist. And I do all the beauty treatments, facials, laser, chiropody, massage, aromatherapy, reflexology. Before she met Tony, Shirley had only spent two days of her life in the bush. She knew as much about animals as her new husband did about aromatherapy. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell Shirley that she'd be moving in with a hippo. Uh, when I met her, uh, I took her to the farm. And uh, I told her about Jessica on the way to the farm. The only thing that I knew about hippos were that they are extremely dangerous and that they kill people. And then I told her that, uh, that Jessica sleeps on the veranda with her dogs and sometimes comes into the house. That took a bit of adapting, but uh, it's all sorted out. You know? <laughs> In fact, when Shirley met Jessica, it was love at first sight. And immediately, I felt at ease with her. I wasn't tense at all. I wasn't scared of her. I could just be myself. And I can never imagine my life without Tess. Never. Shirley's dedication to Jessica is driven by a powerful maternal instinct. And with not having kids, um, I've accepted her as, as a child. I'm like her mother, she's my daughter. And that's why I could just go to her and cuddle her and love her and be gentle with her because um, she's really the one that I can share my whole life with. And there's nothing more important than that. Even Tony's tough bushman persona melts under Jessica's influence. I've never had a relationship with another animal like Jessica. You just can't help loving her, that's it, basically. And for Tony, that's saying something. In his 35 years as a game ranger, Tony has had relationships with a lot of different animals. During the course uh, of my career, I did find a lot of orphan animals, or a lot of orphan animals uh, were brought to me and uh, I've had to raise them. I've raised uh, elephant, buffalo, black rhino, leopard, lion, antelope species, kudu, impala, daika, then warthog, porcupines, bush babies, um, and hedgehogs. 
all the animals that Tony has raised have returned to a natural life in the wild. He's proud of his hands-off approach to parenting and has applied the same successful formula to Jessica, his first hippo. Uh, Jessica was never in captivity, never. She was never locked up, fenced in. And uh, from a baby, she mingled uh, with the wild hippos. She grazes with them and she understand, uh, understands their languages. With no fences to restrict her, Jessica is free to leave Tony and Shirley any time she chooses. If she wants to, she can migrate down the river into the Kruger National Park. So she is free. And uh, to me, she also lives a, a, a natural, normal life. Uh, rehab is not necessary. She mingles with, with, with the wild hippos. So she can survive here. Seeing Jessica in the wild is a sign to Tony that he has been a good substitute parent. But to prove it, Tony wants to see Jessica become pregnant. That'll be, I think, uh, quite a, a high spot in my life because uh, then you realize you achieved something in life by saving Jessica and there's a result. She's uh, committing to uh, the other hippos, you know. For Tony, Jessica's pregnancy would be proof that her life around the house hasn't compromised her potential life as a normal hippo. To me, it's one big achievement. It's a goal that I've reached. But Shirley thinks of Jessica as her daughter. She also wants Jessica to become pregnant, just as any mother wants her daughter to start a family of her own. I'd love Jessica to become pregnant. It's um, something I can't actually wait for it to happen, because it's going to be so exciting. And to watch each and every move, how she's going to handle herself and her baby. And you can even take more care of her, treat her, spoil her more. Always be there for her. It's like, it's going to be you on duty 24 hours a day. Coming up. It's not aggressive, is she? No, no, no. The vet is called in to see Jessica. You might end up with an animal that doesn't grow out to her full potential. And in so doing, she does not actually reach the, the required body requirements and weight in order to be mated. And a stranger turns up on the riverbank. Jessica the Hippo lives a life of luxury with her adoptive human parents, Shirley and Tony, who would love for Jessica to find a mate and start a family of her own. But when do hippos become fertile and ready to mate? When do they go through puberty? Surprisingly, we know much less about hippos than any other large land mammal. This is because they're notoriously difficult to study. The way biologists study many animals is by analyzing blood samples. To acquire a blood sample from a big mammal, you first have to tranquilize it with a dart. But hippos spend their nights in thick bush, making it very hard to track them, and even harder to hit them with a dart. During the day, hippos are in the water, Tranquilize a hippo in the water and it'll drown. What we do know is that in the wild, most female hippos appear to come into puberty anywhere between 7 and 17 years old. This would make Jessica, at only 5, a little young to become a mother. But maybe Jessica's condition is more similar to well-fed, captive hippos in a zoo. They've been known to go through puberty when only two years old. The only way to discover Jessica's status for sure is to call in the vet. This is the first time that she's been seen by a veterinarian. Jessica's never been ill, so Tony has never seen it as a necessity to call the vet in. And how many of them are there? Peter Rogers is a vet whose patients include buffaloes, rhinos, elephants, and lions. 
but hippos are the hardest of the big animals to work with, and so it's rare to be called out to meet one. And it's even more unusual to meet a tame hippopotamus. One of the most dangerous animals is a wild animal that has been tamed, and I've got scars on my own body to prove that. So Peter approaches Jessica cautiously. Ah, that's Jessica. Yes. She's not aggressive, is she? No, yeah. not at all. Sure. Well, no. we'll find out now. She's like my mother-in-law. Don't give me a I love Becky. But she doesn't mind us being struck in the back. No, she loves it. Fine. As far as the behaviour is concerned, I was very impressed. You know, I've, I've been in the, in, the, in the wildlife industry for many, many years and I've seen many things go wrong. But what amazed me is that she is very relaxed um, with their company, with our company, but one has got to always have respect for a wild animal, tame or not. Peter is here to take samples of Jessica's dung. Tony and Shirley will do this every day for the next few weeks. When the samples are analysed, the results will reveal if Jessica is ready to conceive. Don't bite your nails afterwards. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Overall, Peter reckons Jessica looks in fairly good shape. Having said that, it's very difficult to evaluate the condition of a thick-skinned animal like a rhino or a hippo, an elephant for that matter. But on the surface, she looks, she looks good to me. But despite the general thumbs up, Peter is concerned by the consistency of Jessica's dung. To me, that's not normal, and Tony explained it as being the result of a lot of sweet potatoes yesterday. It looks like Jessica has diarrhoea. Sweet potatoes have very little roughage in them. Eat too many and you get a runny tummy. Jessica's diet not only affects her dung, but it might also influence her fertility. All animals need to reach a certain size before they can become fertile, and Peter suspects that Jessica is still a little small. In the wild, it takes female hippos about 20 years to become fully grown. To get a sense if Jessica is on track, Peter needs to check out her diet. Her uh, diet was, that was told to me now, it was actually quite interesting, uh, if not amazing. So what exactly does Jessica eat? Well, Tony maintains that most of her diet is grass, but because Jessica's never supervised, it's hard to tell. In addition to the grass, Tony and Shirley like to spoil Jessica by giving her dog biscuits, which she loves. For Peter, this isn't too much of a worry. The, the dog cubes as well, that is more of a treat, so I don't see that as being a problem. A bit more of a problem, you'd think, is the idea of giving a hippopotamus coffee. Coffee? Yeah, and then she has 20 litres of coffee a day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, she's, she's a caffeine addict. We well, if you look at the mixture, it's, uh, it's very weak. It must be warm, it must be sweet. Ooh, uh, what, what, how do you make it sweet? What do you put in there with it? Sugar. Tony started the habit when he had to wean her off her baby milk. As I reduced the milk, I felt uh, but guilty. I would have a cup of coffee while she's having her milk, and uh, I always used to leave a little bit in the cup. She would open a little mouth and pour the coffee down her, down her mouth. And uh, after a year, and the milk got less and less, and now she ends up with coffee, which she loves. But Jessica's coffee is not the kind you'd want to dunk your donut into. Take two teaspoons yeah. of coffee. So, I mean, the coffee, and, and then how many litres of water? Four. So the coffee is just a little taste. Yeah. She does get coffee, you know, four litres of very weak coffee, and if you put it all into, into perspective, it forms a very small part of her diet. I don't see that as being a problem. 20 kilograms of sweet potatoes a day is a lot. Um, even for a hippo, I think it's a lot, but it might be fine. It just sounds like a lot. Jessica loves sweet potatoes. In fact, she eats over 40 pounds of them each day. She munches them in the water, on the veranda and on the lawn. Never having had to face a sweet potato-eating hippo before, Peter heads back to research the implications of Jessica's diet. Cheers, we'll be in contact. Bye. Of course, in the wild, hippos don't eat sweet potatoes, dog food, or drink coffee, for that matter. Their diet consists mostly of grass. It's estimated that a full-grown hippo will get through about 35 kilos, or 77 pounds of grass, each night. 
Remember, this is only an estimate, and only for a full-grown hippopotamus. Because it's extremely difficult to follow hippos night after night as they forage in 